Hey, what's going on, everyone? Before we get into our conversation, I want to let you know this podcast is sponsored by BetRivers.com. BetRivers.com, the best place for all your sports gambling needs. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast. You can also watch all of these episodes on the Field of 68 YouTube channel. Now, let's get into our conversation. Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is Eric Devendorf, your host of the Scorers Table podcast. Today, we got another great guest. Uh, one of the most talented guys ever come through Q's. He only spent one year at the Q's. Uh, he ended up getting hurt, but he still got drafted first round um, by the Brooklyn Nets. He ended up playing for the Washington Wizards in the G League overseas in various countries, China, Europe, Puerto Rico, Korea, the Middle East. And he's currently now playing in Taiwan. My guy, Chris McCullough. What's up, bro? What's the world? What's up, bro? Man, I appreciate you coming on, man. So we're gonna we're gonna start uh back home, man, in, in the Bronx in the BX. Kind of tell me, you know, how how your uh love for the game started and how was it growing up in the Bronx? Uh just just the love of the game. Um I was kind of born into the family. You know, my uh, my uncles played basketball, they all went to college, played pro, Pittsburgh, Arizona. Uh my father went to Murray State. My mom, she played for a little while. She stopped in high school, but like basketball was just all around in the family. And my grandfather played professionally. So it, I was just born into it, you know, it, it became natural, it became natural for me. And just, just growing up in the Bronx, you know, uh, growing up with, uh, I got three sisters and my only boy, only one that played basketball out of my sisters and, and me. So, you know I mean? I just, it came from my family and I, I just stuck with it, you know, living in the Bronx. Um, it was wild. But for me, it was it was kind of like normal, you know? like things I used to get into back in the days, like all the trouble was normal for me because it's rain from the Bronx. That's what you see growing up. So, yeah, um, I lost a friend early on. I think I was 11 when I first lost my first my, my closest friend. And once he got killed, that's when like it switched on for me. Like I get more serious about it. So, I mean, I know you, you was probably one of the bigger kids growing up. Mm -hmm. I mean, was you was you just hearing it? I know, like you said, you was born into it. The fam, everybody in the family was already hooping. But I mean, was you already getting it from the outside too? Knowing you was one of the bigger kids already going outside, they was probably on you about hooping. Yeah, uh, yeah, the no, they was because uh, I mean, I, I grew up in a community. It's, it's my whole family lived in that one area, so I had family all around, uncles around, cousins everywhere outside. So I, I was always good to be outside, play basketball with myself and everything. And at an early age, people seen that I was I was better than people my age. So I started playing with the older guys, playing a different tournament with the older guys, and, and, and that's how I got better, to be honest. So um, yeah, the guys ahead of me, they, they seen it early on. I, I, didn't, I didn't really notice how good I was until I went to prep school my first year, and I'm like, damn, I could, I could really hoop with the, with the older guys. I'm playing on varsity. I was hyped about that, averaging a certain amount of points, and that, that's when I really started to take it real serious. So it, we'll talk about high school, because you, you, I think your sophomore year, you ended up going to school in Connecticut, right? Uh, freshman year, freshman year. So you went right off top. You went, you went, you went out outside of the city. Well, I mean, what went into that decision? Not going to school in the Bronx and then going outside. Um, to be honest, go to uh St. Raymond's in the Bronx. It's like a good high school in the Bronx. Um, yeah. I I, I don't know how good they are now. That was back then, but um, I think I was in eighth grade and with this guy that worked at my school. He was like a janitor dude. Like I I think he was like a janitor or custodian. I didn't know what his 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 job title was. But um, one day he was like, yo, you should come to this place in the city. I'm like, what place? He's like, it's Boys Club in New York, man. Uh, what's your mother information? I'm going to take it down. And I call her, let her know she can bring you. I'm like, all right, man, we're going to see what it is. I didn't know what it was. My mom took me down there one day. I remember the day was like a Wednesday. It was raining and everything. Uh, it was like, it was like no lie. It happened to be like over 50 prep schools there. It was just like a basketball showcase for, for like kids in New York that was that was like good Let's try to get in prep school. And you know, I was in, I was the only one in eighth grade at that time. And I was playing with older guys who was, who was going to prep school, who was, who was trying to post grad and everything. I played really well that day and I had like 20 prep schools on me. So my, my mom's told no, this is my that's my first time my mom's going through the process as well. She don't know she don't know much about prep school. She don't know much about sending her son away to school to go get a better education. So we told them the different schools, they sending us applications and everything. They're like, yeah, you need this, this type of uh, grade point errors to get in this school. It costs this amount to get in this school, but we can give you a scholarship if you if you qualify for the um for the grades you have. And that's how I started. Like I had that in my eighth grade year, I had to move my grades all the way up to like A's. I had to, I had to go in that school with, with all 90s, all A's. And, and that was hard to do, but I mean, I had teachers that worked with me and helped me out. 
So that was that was big for me. So you you in eighth grade, I mean shit, you probably what 13, 14 years old for real. Yeah. And, and all you know is, is is the Bronx. That's where you're growing up at. And now you're going outside of, I know Connecticut ain't far, but for, for people who grow up in the city, shit. It's going, far enough. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's far a, enough. It's far enough. So what tell me like about that transition, being away from the fam, having to go to Connecticut, uh, you know, a whole bunch of different people. What was that like for you? Um, to be honest, my, uh, my, my very first, not even month, my very first two weeks was like the hardest. Cause I'm like, damn, I, I never been away from my family this long. Yeah. Like I, I I'm, I'm in Connecticut, two and a half hours away in the middle of nowhere. There's no stores. There's, there's no lights. It's dark. It's not what I'm used to. I'm not comfortable here. People talk different from me. So I had to learn, I had to, <laughs> I had to, I had to, I had to adjust like, damn, this is crazy for me. So like my, my, over my first month, my first month, two months, it, it was kind of hard. I was pulling back home a lot. And then once I made friends, like I, I'm a person, like I'm very likable. People like hanging around me, so I made friends like this. And and once that happened, um, the dorm I lived in, I had I had three other dudes that lived in my dorm too, and they was from New York. They was from Brooklyn, so we, you know, we we cool. And every, so everything went good after that. So after the month or two, I, everything was smooth, and I got used to being away from home and everything. It became regular to me. So so on the hoop shit on the, on the hoop part. I know that wasn't much of a transition because you was kind of like you was catching your stride, so to speak, like eighth grade going into high school. That's when really you was starting to pick up that, that hoop shit a little bit more. School starting to get on you. I know sophomore yeah. year, you guys, uh, I think you went to the state championship, if I ain't mistaken. I know you had like 26 and 12 as a sophomore. So like you, you said, like you started to feel a little bit uh, like you was the man playing with this older kids. But now you in high school, you you giving these stats out, you guys winning games. Like what year, I guess, in high school was it like, all right, damn, like I, I want to play college ball, but I want to play in the NBA too. Like when you start really thinking that in your head. Uh, I, I said my freshman year, I, I started thinking about like like the NBA. Cause uh, at my school conference, the first school I went to, we had we had like people like, we had Andre Drummond in my conference. We had uh, Noah Vonley in my conference, Wayne Selden. So we had NBA mm -hmm. caliber guys. So I'm like, damn, these guys rank. I could play with them. Like, you know what I mean? And this is my year to get ranked. And I could play with them. I want to show like New England what I could do too. So that, that's what I started to do. My freshman year, um, we didn't win a championship my freshman year, but my sophomore year, like you said, we won, a we won the first ever championship in that high school period. So that that helped a lot. And, and sophomore year was like, like like the best year for me. Like that's when I took off. I started to get ranked. I had twenty different colleges offering me. My what was my very first, I think my very first offer was from uh for Virginia and the ACC. So when I got that, that's that just opened the doors. Like I got that, then I got St. John's, I got Hofstra. I, I was getting offers back to back. Teams coming to watch me play, watch me work out uh after study hall and stuff. So it, it, it was good for me. And let's be real too. Like you, six ten, six eleven. You can shoot the ball. You can step out. You can put it on the ground. You have athletic. Now nowadays, like you see that more. But back then, it wasn't. You was probably one of very few who was doing that type of shit, right or wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was. I was at that time. I was only like six five, six six. I, I hit okay. a growth. My freshman year, I was six feet. Um, from September to October, I grew six inches. Hold so on, that, bro. That, hold on, hold on. So you said so your <laughs> your freshman year you was only six foot. I was six feet, bro. So you so what you what you was playing at six foot? You you was guard, obviously. Uh, yeah, yeah, I was playing like like the two, like playing the, like the two or three. Um, because everybody like in New York, you know, everybody New York is guard heavy, so everybody is guard. Yeah. So the whole team was just stacked with guard. So I played like the like the two three. I played two three four. So it, it, it didn't matter. I was just like the tallest one. Cause everybody else was short. But yeah, I, from from freshman year to October, from September to October, I grew six inches. It'd be it'd be so crazy to me. Um, one day I, I called my mom like, "Yo, we gotta go to the hospital." I would be walking, and I would hear my knees crack. So I, I thought something was wrong. I go to the hospital. They were like, "Yo, <laughs> maybe you maybe you you hitting the growth spurt or something like that." Like, I mean, it's nothing negative. But maybe you are getting taller. Like, it's like a lot of tall people in your family. But I'm like, damn, tall people usually have weak knees. I don't want that to be me. And then. A month later, I grew six six, bro. So, so you, damn. So you, you get that growth spurt. You killing already, and then, and then you go to these these other top from Connecticut. These other top prep schools. You was, you spend time at Brewster, 
And then you spent you spent time at IMG, which is you was at a you was at a good school in Connecticut. But these schools right here that you're going to like this, this a whole other level. Yeah. Right. So you go to these schools, you're one of the best players in the country. I mean, just not even the games. What what was that like just practicing? Because all your guys on your team was division one athletes. Oh man, Bruce Brewster was the was the was the best. Um I got there. We we had from from one through one through fifteen, we had the I think two two guys didn't go D1. And out, out of everybody, 13 guys went high level D1. So the practices in general, first of all, the first day of practice was like NBA All-Star game. Like it's, <laughs> everybody, everybody out there dunking, hitting threes, doing different types of step, different moves. I'm like, damn, these, these motherfuckers are nice. Like they, they good. You really gotta go. Cause I mean it's 15 of us, not everybody gonna play. You want to be the one that play, and it's so crazy. My team is so good. We all averaged the same amount of points. I think I averaged the most. I averaged was like 13.5, 13.7. Everybody after that was like after me, after me, after me, after me. So we, we was all good. Um, that year we won. Then we won like like 25 straight games, and then we we lost two games. We lost one game early in the season to, to some bullshit team. Then we lost the championship game. That's the only thing we lost. But but that year was crazy. Like we we had like. Over a hundred college coaches in the gym daily, like daily. It was crazy. Different so what about, all types of head catches. What, what about IMG? What was that like? Um, IMG, I, it was it was a different experience because I, I actually I didn't go to school at IMG. Um, at that time, I I was taking I was taking college class. I was taking like like three college courses already at Syracuse, but I was at IMG doing it. I had like a they sent me with like a tutor and stuff like that, but yeah. like my whole my whole experience was different. Like I lived in a mansion. I had like they gave out like mansions to all the post grads. I was living in a mansion. It was like five bedrooms, big house. You know, a couple of my roommates had cars, so I was taking their cars, going around to the city. I was in Tampa, I was chilling. <laughs> it was kind of like I was in college already, but yeah. but I wasn't. I was just living on IMG campus. So um, that, that was crazy. And then they they facilities is like top of the line I ever seen. So, so you was basically there, there just training, just working out, you know, getting training, those classes up, ready to go to the exactly, yeah, exactly, exactly what I was doing. Let me tell you guys a little bit about our partners over at Bet Rivers Sportsbook. If you haven't signed up with Bet Rivers yet, now's the time because they are offering a $250 match bonus for your first deposit. But what sets them apart is that they require just one playthrough to turn your bonus into cash money. With their new Rush Pay instant approval, withdrawing your winnings is safer, more secure, and more reliable. With basketball season right around the corner, there's never been a better time to get in on the action by going to betrivers.com. Today or downloading the Bet Rivers iOS app. Must be 21 years or older. Gambling problem? Call telephone number 1 800 Gambler. So what about like so how how did like Q's come into the picture? Well, I know you, I mean obviously New York, but it was a whole bunch of other schools. You could have really went to anywhere you wanted to go to. So so why did why choose Syracuse? Syracuse was just like it was just um I always wanted to go there. Like I always watch their games. I used to go to their games all the time when they, they played in the Master Garden. Um I don't know the, to me that that was like Going to their games back then was like going to NBA games. Like, damn, these motherfuckers got more fans than NBA teams. And why, why is more fans right. here than the Knicks game? Like, that, that was dope <laughs> to me, for real, to be honest. And I don't know. I just I just watched a lot of Syracuse basketball back then. My cousin went to Syracuse. So when she used to go to parties and, and I, I would go on my cousin's business, I would go chill with her. I, I already knew everybody that was there three years before I got there. So by the time I got there, they were seniors. But I, I knew the whole school. So, like, yeah. <laughs> it was it was regular to me. So, um. I don't know. I just it just felt like home. To be honest, it felt like home. I, I, I always I always wanted to play in that zone. I used to watch Melo a lot. Melo played there. You know, he was a big inspiration for me going there too. So it was just like I, I had to go there. It was, it was no no other schools for real. So when you was going to the games and and the guard watching Cubs play, who was the guy you was really like, God damn, that he could. Um, at this time it was it was. I was watching a lot. I was watching uh. Dion. James Sutherland, James Sutherland, he's the every game I went to, he, he out there hitting seven threes. I'm like, yeah, yeah. motherfucker <laughs> shoot like this. Damn, that's crazy. <laughs> Him, Dion. Um, I knew Scoop for the longest. I used to watch Scoop. Um, who else? 
That's about it from, from that team. Uh, that, I think I think that year, Mike Carter was a freshman that year. Yeah, yeah he was a freshman that year. I, I remember he, he had he had a big dunk that game played against St. John. Um, yeah, that's about I it. Actually, came down the lane that freshman yeah, year. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I was I was right. I was behind the fence that day. I was I was there. I was there for that shit. So you get the cues, man. You, like you said, you you knew where you wanted to go years before. You knew it was it, it was cute. So you get the cues. You finally there. You familiar though. I mean, you, like you said, your cousin went there. You knew people, but now you start to get into the hoop shit. You know, with Coach mm-hmm. Bayheim, you kind of feeling how it really is to be coached by a Hall of Famer. What was that like when it really set in on the court? Like, fuck, I'm here. You know what I'm saying? Coach Bayheim is coaching me. Um. Oh, uh, I, I can't even explain. I don't that shit was like this this to finally even put on like the practice jerseys. I'm like, damn, like this is fire right here. We finally at Q finally gonna play a college game. Like, damn, I, I don't wait so much long for this, this time to come. But it it, it it was good, you know what I mean? My uh I didn't it didn't last long. I got hurt early, but the but the the games I did play and the time I had there, it was it was good, it was amazing. I, I appreciated it. Uh it taught me a lot. But even like this, this playing in the carrier dome, like even going to the games, thirty thousand fans. It's like, come on, bro! Like this yeah. shit preparing you for the NBA or whatever. Like there's it, only one way about it. So I, mean, I, I took it all in. I took it all in. So you, like you said, you, your season got cut short, tore tore your ACL. I think when it was like nine, twelve games in or something like that. The sixteen game. Sixteen. Yeah, I know you remember. I, I know exactly when I fucked my knee up. The date, the time, all that type of shit. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, but your mindset before coming into Q's, like, the talent that you was, bro, like, it was already, you was going to the league. You know what I'm saying? Was that your mindset, though? Like, coming in, like, all right, I'm going I'm to do this one year, and then I'm going I'm to get to the league. Is that what you was trying to do? Or you wasn't, you, you didn't know. You know what I'm saying? that You, you might have did one year, you might have did two years. Yeah, yeah, I, I didn't know what it was gonna be. I, I, I didn't. I seen my name on draft boards early, like even in high school, early, like yo, you could be drafted too in 2015, first round. But at, at that point, I wasn't paying no mind because I didn't play a game yet, so I don't know how it's gonna go, how it's gonna end up. You never know. But um, I, I started off pretty good, and and my name, my name was 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 buzzing. It was, it was going up in the uh, in the draft boards. I had Benham on my back. You think you're good enough? You're not going to the fucking NBA. <laughs> I had him on my back. Yeah. I'm like, damn, I'm not even saying nothing. But um, yeah, like my, my I did put I did pretty well for the most part. Then my, my name, you know how you know how he get. My name was going up on the draft boards, and once I got hurt, um, after that, I'm like, damn, now nah, that's gonna put a standstill on it. I probably won't get drafted this year. I probably won't get drafted as high as I, as I as I was initially. And then once I got hurt, every week. A, a new, a new, um, a new set of names come out, and my name go down, go down, go down, go down. I'm like, damn, all right. So I, I know I'm in this area right here. If I leave now, will I get drafted in this area, or will I go second round? So I'm like, I don't know. I had an agent back then, so I'm talking to him. He was like, we, we a couple of teams right now. You, your name is stagnant. Where it's gonna stay at? Like, you, you're not gonna move down too far. So I'm like, okay, good. Um, so the, the thing I just had to worry about just like, rehabbing for real, and try to get back. So, man, because I, I tore my ACL, bro, and I know how that, that rehab was. And, and people really didn't get to see – they didn't get to see you for real. You know what I'm talking mm-hmm. about? Like, they got they got to see you yeah, at 15, 16 games, but they really ain't get to see that Chris McCullough in stride. You know what I'm saying? Like, like yeah. uh, if you, you you get comfortable and let loose, I think you was averaging like 10, but you know how it is. Like you said, you, the opportunities maybe weren't – you know, you wouldn't get the most opportunities to really show, but then you get hurt. What was that fucking right when you went down or right when you heard that you tore your ACL? I mean, what was that mindset like for you? Did, did was you thinking like, damn, I'm still gonna go? Or was you thinking like, fuck, I gotta, I gotta stay here another year, get right and do it over again? At the time, I, I didn't even know what ACL was to be honest. When when it first happened, I'm like, <laughs> damn, like I never heard of this. Then, then after that, one of my boys went down. He played the VCU, Beyonce, or whatever. He went yeah. down like two days, two days after me with the same shit. So I'm like, damn, is these shit's coming? So I, I had to look it up and see what it was. I'm looking at it. I'm looking at it. I'm reading. I'm reading through it, and I, I see how long it actually it actually takes for you to get back to your to your normal self. And I'm like, damn, it's gonna take me a year, year and a half. I'm like, shit, I'm I'm out this year. 
next year, who knows if I, if I come back healthy enough to play next year. And then year after that, I might be a junior. So now it's like, damn, I'm kind of late in my career. So do, do I go now or do I just, just wait it out? So that's what's going through my head the whole time. And I'm just like, yo, I just got to get the best doctor and, and just, just, just get ready to rehab. And that was my focus going into it. I mean, what was that rehab like for you, bro? Like, you know, going through that grind and that, I guess what point in the rehab did you make your mind up like, all right, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and test this and test the draft? Damn, I'm up a lot of the rehab shit. But I, that was like the hardest thing you really got to commit to. I'm not going to lie, because you, you miss one day, that one day can set you back two more weeks. Yeah. Like that, like that, like that, that's just a real grind. Like having to go in there every day doing the same thing. And it's repetitive too. You get tired of it, you get bored of it. Like, Legs hurting, body all sore, but you you got to do it. And it's like a no lie, it's like a, a eighth month process. You got to just keep doing the same thing every day, every day, every day. I was getting tired of this shit. Like, damn, that shit is shit is whack, man. But it's nothing I could do. <laughs> yeah, because everybody my age that, that that I grew up with that's playing. Everybody in Vegas working out, then Cali working out, then all these type of places I want to be, and I can't even do that. I got to sit here and rehab and watch them, watch YouTube videos come of them working out. So that shit that was hard for me, to be honest. At what point though did you did you figure out like all right I'm good I'm I'm, I'm gonna go to the draft. Um, so not now at this point this is this is like a couple months into to the rehab when I'm like I'm really talking to the agent and now I gotta figure out if I'm gonna finish classes in Q so finish up my uh my freshman year or if I'm if I'm gonna uh leave and into the draft so at this point I'm like well I only got like four classes to finish up I could do that all I gotta do is take tests study for tests take tests. When I did that shit, I'm like, yo, I'm just going into the draft. Like my agent said, my, my name's at this point. I'm not going to slip too far past this point. That's what this team says. That's what this team saying. Like, let's test the waters and see how how we're gonna go. I'm better myself. That's a fact. Better on yourself. So you brought it to you brought it to Coach Behind. What what he tell you? Oh man, <laughs> what he said. I, I'm trying to remember exactly what he what he. I think he when I first brought it to him. He just looked at me with the face like you, you fucking stupid. Like he, he just gave me that. He he just gave me that. You know that look when he he just gave you like. I'm I'm like yeah man. I'm just going into the draft. I need you just to sign the paper. I mean he signed it, but he was like yo. I don't think you should go. You're not ready. Um, you should come back for another year. I'm, I'm gonna talk to your parents and stuff like that. I'm I'm like at the end of the day. It's not my parents' decision. It's my decision. I'm the one that's playing. They're not playing, so you know what I mean. They they can they can only tell tell me or tell you what what was was right and what they think. But it's ultimately my decision. So either way, yeah. you got to sign this paper, bro. I'm trying to leave. So you I mean you got you got to do what I, what I want you to do. <laughs> at the end of the day, yeah. And, you know he he probably didn't like it. You know him being him, but I'm like yo, it's, I mean it's my life. So I mean I'm gonna do what I what I gotta do. At that time too, I, I was having I was having a baby at that time, so I'm like, nah, yeah. now I gotta focus on him. I gotta take care of him too. Like, you good? I'm I live in the projects, bro. Like, you know what I mean? I gotta I gotta get out the mud. So that's that's what happened. And, and, and I'm glad you said that too, because not a lot of people look at that, bro. They you know how Syracuse fans is like they so selfish. Oh man, that they want the most. You know what I'm saying? They want you to stay, but they're not looking at like you. You got to take care of your family. How you, you know, how you grew up. Like this since day one, you've been working to get to this, you know, this position, and now it's like in my grasp. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So, so I got to go ahead, like you said, I got to go ahead and bet on bet on myself. And, and I think people like you know the common person don't really understand, bro. Like you, all the sacrifice you put in up to that point, going away from home since eighth grade, going to Connecticut. You know, going to uh to Brewster you know, in the middle of nowhere. I know that's in the middle of nowhere. Ain't nothing going. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then going to IMG, like this ain't that ain't normal for a kid at, at at you know growing up like that. Kids ain't doing that for real. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like the average fan, like when when you get to this point, when you get to a point where you you can see the NBA and be like, ah, I, I can do it. I could get drafted. The average mm -hmm. fan ain't take taking all that other stuff into account, like all the stuff yeah. that you. Ain't doing. <laughs> And it's crazy that you mentioned that because even when I first when I first uh, announced that I, I was leaving, I got so much hate in my, in my comments on Instagram. While I was getting DMs and messages. Hope you tell your other ACL, you suck, Damn. you no good. Yeah, like the fan, like they they, they was tearing me up too at at, the, at that time. You know how what's the wildest? Fans. What's the wildest DM you got uh, uh, from somebody like that? You know what I mean? From a Q's fan? 
Or, or just from like after that happened when you announced, yeah, what was the wildest DM? Yeah, like, like, I hope you tear your ACL, your ACL again. I hope you tear your other one, or or you suck. You never gonna make it. This this this, this a lot of hate. You know what I mean? But I, I didn't pay no mind. Like, who the fuck? Is, you won't say it to my face. I bet you that. So I mean, I let it slide, but it, it, it was a lot of hate going on in the messages too, man. I, I remember a lot. I remember it a lot, bro. It was a lot of hate, bro. I, anytime I post a picture, it was a lot of cute fans hating in the comments, like they're saying a lot of hateful stuff. I'm like, damn, who who would wish that on somebody? Like, I would never wish something like that on my bad, my, my best day, my bad day. But it is what it is. I mean, I let it, I let it rock. You know, like whatever. And, and these was the same people that was just, you know, cheering for you on your dick at <laughs> the the you you feel know, me? month, a month, two months before. Like that's mm -hmm. and that's what people don't understand about athletes too. Like when you know, when you see an athlete, like, kind of go off or something like that, like, you ain't seeing all that stuff, like, all those comments and people talking about their family, like, death threats, just off of you going to the NBA to try to make yourself better and make it, make it better for your family. Yeah. These people it, it, talking to you like that. Like, it's, it's no way in the world that's, that a college athlete should, should be have to go, go through that type of stuff just because of yeah, the decision that, that they made. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah, it, it, it was wild, bro. Yeah, you know, it was wild, bro. I was I was getting a lot of and it was at a time I was like, I'm not even gonna post nothing. I don't want them to comment on my shit. Whatever they comment is gonna be some old shit, but I don't want them to comment on new. Like it, it was that bad. Like DMs left and right, just cute fans, cute fake pages, fake fans. I'm like, damn, this is wild, yo. Shit was crazy. So you get you make the decision, you you uh you know grind it out with the rehab, you go through all that bullshit having to tell coach and all that. Mm -hmm. And then you get to draft night. You know what I'm saying? Like this is what this is what we've been working for. You know what I mean? Like you've been talking to it about your family, your boys, all that. And then you finally hear your name call. You know what I'm saying? Like what 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 do you remember? Like hearing your name call? Like all the emotions going through your mind. Who was with you? Like, what do you remember about that moment? Damn, what's the name? Um, so it, even before the draft, like before, um, like two three days before, like maybe like two weeks before, or whatever. Me and Rock was together every day. Like we was in Vegas together because we, we had the same agent. So we was in Vegas together. I'm, I'm watching him work out. I'm doing rehab, watching him work out. We in a hotel, chilling, playing games. Like, yo, you about to get drafted, bro. Like, this is about to be fire, bro. We both getting drafted. So leading up to draft night, you know, we, we, we in the suites, whatever, putting our suits on. We getting ready. We got our girlfriends with us, whatever. You know, we, we walking downstairs. We like, yo, it's about to be that time, bro. Like, how you feel? We both nervous as hell. So Getting getting to the to the uh Barclays and like just sitting down, like it's like damn, this shit is fire. Like I got my homies from my, my hood, they they back there. I hear them talking, yelling and shit. I'm like, man, <laughs> it, it's about to be the one. So about like I think six names, the six numbers before my spot was called, my name was called. They told me I could go between, I think it was um, I think Dallas with 20, the 23rd pick. Boston had like the 20. Eighth, and then uh, the thirtieth was who? Who was they said thirtieth? Um, was Golden State? They said I could go between between them, them three teams, but they tell you like three spots, like three or four spots ahead of time before your name get called. That yo, you about to get called by this team. Here's your hat, hold it now. So you just throw it on once they call you, whatever. So I, I already the guy walked up to me. He was like, yo, you gonna get called by Brooklyn for the 29th pick. Um, this is around the time they picked like the 25th pick. So I'm like, damn, I bet nervous, yo. I hope I don't trip walking up the stairs. Like this, this relax, calm down. My mom's sitting on the side of me. She nervous as hell. I'm like, yo, relax. You making me nervous. Like, yeah. <laughs> but, 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 but even this, this walking that stage is like, damn, don't trip, don't trip, don't trip. Just smile, shake your hand, keep going. Like it's relaxed. And that, that shit was, that shit was dope, bro. Like I feel like every, any, any boy who, who play basketball, They wish for that to happen, so that, that that was like a big moment. Yeah, no doubt. So you get drafted, you there like the the childhood dream and came true, and now you got to get to work. And I I know that now you did your thing. You you know what I'm saying you celebrated like you should because you got drafted in the city that you was that you from, New York City, mm -hmm. by a team in New York City. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. But now now it's time to get to work. So you know you get into that first practice after summer league and all that. And then it I didn't even really, play summer league. Uh, right, right. So you ain't play summer league. You went right into the training camp. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. kind of like that's when it really sets in. Like, what, what was that feeling? Like, I'm on the court. You know what I mean? In the NBA I didn't even. Court. I didn't even. I didn't even. I didn't even do training camp my first year. 
I, I'm still uh, rehabbing at this time. So ah, so, that's right. That's a fact. Okay. I'm still rehabbing. So at this time, that this this is KG last year with the Nets. You know what okay. I mean? They they traded they traded uh Miles Plumley, whatever, and, and 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 got me. So um, it's KG last year. So he's still like in the front. Oh, he's still in the gym too. So he he telling me, yeah, you gotta beat me in the gym every day. I'm like, what the fuck? I can't even work out. Like, what the fuck, I'm gonna do. Like, I'm still rehabbing. He, you know him. He just. You got to beat me in the gym every day. Yo, every morning. I'm not going to lie. Monday through Friday, every morning. He and that motherfucker, no later than 545. By 6.15, he full sweat. I got to beat him to the gym. Every day. In the morning. Monday in the morning. Every morning. Monday through Friday. In the summertime. Mind you, I can't even play ball yet. I'm still rehabbing. So I was like, what the fuck I'm going to do? My trainer don't get there till fucking 830, maybe. It's like, like, what the hell I'm going to do? Like, I'm just in here just sitting, like, just stretching, just watching him go through workouts and shit like that, talking to him. But I'm picking his brain a little thing. I'm, I'm seeing how, how, he, how professional he is, how, how he being here every day. He got his little routine going. I'm trying to pick up on little things like that because I'm still not – I don't know what it is. I'm still trying to learn. And just to be around Kevin Garnett, it's like, damn, like, motherfucker, my, my, my fucking locker is next to Kevin Garnett, locker and Joe Johnson. That is young. Like, that's tough right there. I'm taking pictures like, yo, this is fire, like. You know what I mean? So th- th- just to have him around was like, yeah, it's, it's a lot right here. And that and you said that was his last year for real. He was doing that type yeah. of shit. Yeah, that was the last year. That that's that's the year um Paul Pierce left him. He left um who else was there? Hey, yeah, I forgot. But that, that was his last year with the Nets. But he was still this this in a gym and around the facility just working out. And he like, yo, you coming in, you you a rookie, you're power four, whatever. You gotta beat me to the gym. I can't say no. So right. just, just just having to pick up on his routines and, and how early he was on every day at the same time and full sweat was like damn that's crazy like motherfucker work hard. This is what people don't see. Yeah, twenty years wow. in the league, and he in his twenty season doing that type of shit. That, he acting like he in, in his rookie year. Yeah, yeah, like this this is what people don't see. Mind you, I'm like damn, I can't even work out. So that's my I'm only I'm only twenty turning twenty one myself. Like. I still want to be a kid too. I want to go. It's summertime. I got drafted, but damn, like, give me a couple days. Let me, let me chill for a little man. Let, let me, let me enjoy my <laughs> process too. At the same time, nah. The very next day, I had to be in the gym. It's just crazy, man. But it, it, it was fun. That was cool. What's what's uh, you know, being around KG, being around Paul Pierce that year. What's one thing you really took from from them, or what's like some of the wildest shit you seen them do? Like, dang. Um, oh well, now nah, Paul Pierce wasn't there like that much. KG was, but um, KG. the wildest, the wildest thing I, I I seen them did was um, nah, not yet. It was Joe Johnson. So one day we in the locker room um after workouts or whatever, and and he he, he getting a check and he he just showing me like like a check. So I'm like, damn, like this is what you really make, and this this the year. He was the second highest paid player after Kobe. So he he making like he getting big check. Not gonna lie, I, I, it might have been like 2.7 that he was getting. So Magic getting 2.7 every two weeks, bro. Like and, and you and you see this, like like, well, like I, I never seen a check that big before. Like even when I got my first check, I never seen I still never seen my check that big. Even my shit wasn't that big, but just to see that on a check was like this real. Like you really getting this shit right <laughs> here, bro. Like that's crazy. To see that shit, I'm like, yo, that 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 that's fire right there, yo. Like, you can't make this shit up. And then just being around, like, I had a lot of vets. Like, I had Jared Jack, I had Daddy is Young, I had Joe Johnson. So just being around them, like, I, I used to do certain things. I used to take J Jack Bentley. I used to get a wash with him. He let me drive the car, you know, or, or carry his bag to the airport. He let me drive the car, and shit like that. Go to the store for me, leave me a thousand dollar tip. Shit like that. So I used to do shit like that just to make extra money. Like, yo, I need anything from the store. I'm going to the store real fast. We land somewhere. <laughs> We land somewhere. What y'all need? Some 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 water, some condoms or something. I got you. I'm going to the store, pick it up. <laughs> yo, yo, they they tipped me a thousand dollars. They give me their uh they uh what's the name? They they, they money for the road trip or whatever. So oh, they, they per diem good. joint, the per diem. Yeah, the per diem be especially you going like on a two-week road trip. Man, I'm taking that. Let me get that. Three thousand yeah, cash. Let me get that, man. So I'm I'm cool with that. That ain't nothing to them. Yeah, I, yeah, I, man. They they playing, they playing with more. Oh, that's that's the craziest thing I seen. So we was on a plane, you know, everybody got their that's like they certain seat on a plane. So it was like you get on a plane, you know, what I mean, you got the comfortable seats, everybody got their seat, whatever. Coach was sitting in the back, media sitting in the back, team in the front. 
they got like a table, like a round table, like 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 four chairs, or whatever. You know what I mean? It usually be the vets sitting right there playing cards. No lie, they they each had big book bags full of hundreds. Like I don't know how much hundred, maybe two hundred, three hundred thousand in their bag. They just playing cards for money, yo. I don't know. That's the first time I ever learned how to play um a uh, bure. A bure, yeah. Yeah, so so my my first time, I I, I tried to fuck me around. They tried to fuck around with them. I was per diem, whatever. We had like like two two three thousand dollars, whatever. We going a uh, West Coast trip. One hand, that shit went like ten seconds, yo. I lost my money in <laughs> ten seconds. Yo. I was so mad, like I'm never gonna play this shit again. This what y'all doing for a living? Y'all can have that shit. So I ain't never what, do what that. What they shit. say to you? What, what, what they say to you when you lost that hand? I, I told you, young fella. This ain't, this ain't, this ain't for them young boys. I told they just sit there laughing at me around like I we told you, like I'm like, yo, I just want to see you, man. But the fact y'all really took my money, like damn, like three thousand, that's that fast. But yo, yo, they used to stay up all day, all night playing that shit, like long, like six hour long flights, yo. Like, I'm like, damn, that's crazy. Like the most I seen somebody win was like 400. God damn. Yeah, who I'm was like, it? Who, who, who was it? So this this is my uh this one I was on the Wizards, so it it'd be like it'd be John it'd be uh B Bill Mike Scott, um who else used to play uh Ty Lawson, okay Ty Law, yeah so like they 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 used to play a lot and shit I I, I didn't see I didn't see Mike win three hundred, uh Bill went three fifty, I'm like damn I went one time. Before we had to go to Toronto, I'm with I'm with Ty, whatever. We we go to the casino in uh, DC, MGM in DC. The first time I've ever seen the game um Baccarat. Yeah. No lie. He 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 must have won like he won like 350 in like 30 minutes. And I'm like, he he trying to teach me the game. He's like, it's just so easy. Like you just bet this or bet that. Like, yo, he won 350 in like 30 minutes, y'all. No lie, 350k, and, 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 and like an hour after that, we had to fly to Toronto for a game. We couldn't even get in Toronto. He had so much money on him, they won't let him into customs. Shit was Damn, wild, bro. So what'd he do? What'd he do with the bread? Nah, we, uh, they ended up letting him in, but we had to sit there for like three hours just to figure it out. Like just sitting on a plane once we landed, because they didn't want to let him in. He had so much money on him. And he's like, what are he going to do with it? Like, he just went into the casino. But this, this seeing somebody win that shit was like, yo, that's crazy. Like, motherfucker went 300 some thousand, like, leaving off the plane. Like, first of all, oh, I'm from, motherfucker, you owe somebody $100, they on your back. But somebody owe you 400 <laughs> Like, that's crazy. Like, that's a fact. 400 yeah, God damn. Bro, that, that shit is wild, bro. But anytime, like, anytime uh, my man Mike Scott used to win, he, he was like my old, like, he was like a brother to me. So, like, he'd look out for me. He, he'd be like, yo, like, you know, when we land, Got you, like, I'm going to go shopping. I'm gonna take you with me. So he taking me shopping and shit. You know what I mean? Everything come out his expense. He, he went all this money. So like, yo, I got you. Whatever sneakers you want, clothes you want, I got you. I'm going to throw you some bread on the side here. You know, you my little man. I'll take that. My birthday, shit. He uh he came to my room one day, gave me like 10 bands. Yeah, for you, for your birthday. Damn, that's real shit right there. Yeah, yeah it's going to store for me. I came with the store from came back. He threw me 10 bands. Yeah, it's for you. That's, that, that's, that's, what, that's what he used to do on a rag, though. I was yeah, regular for him. Man, that's super important as a young fella to have them type of dudes in the league too, because you know how motherfuckers get like, especially a young fella coming in. Like we, you know, we can we on the same team, but we compete, and especially you know them old heads probably just you know feel like they can get be getting pushed out or whatever like that. So mm -hmm. it sound it sound like wherever you went, you you had guys that was looking out, taking care of. You. Yeah, yeah, I, I had I had dude looking yeah like we used to go to the clubs, go to the, like different spots, go out there. The only time I felt hurt. My my rookie year, so we uh we we all go out to a team dinner in the end. I remember this shit. So it, it's me and Rondé. We the only rookie at this time. So um, in fact, me Rondé and Willie Reed back then. He was a rookie too. Yeah, Willie Reed, like, big fella. They, yeah, big dude center. So so they like yo um end of the night, everybody starting to peel off and shit like that. But everybody in there ordering all types of wine, drinks and shit, ordering big steaks and shit. We eating good. I'm like, oh, it's going on the team shit, man. I'm starting to notice motherfuckers dipping off a little, dipping off slowly, dipping off. The room gets smaller and smaller. <laughs> they like, yo, all the rookies put your, put your card in the hat. So I'm like, put your card in the hat? Like, what you talking about? Like, like yeah, yeah, put your, put your card in the hat. Like, debit card, your, your, uh, your credit card, whatever, put it in the hat. It was like, yo, um, whoever, whoever card get picked last got to pay the bill. So I'm like, damn, that's OD. Like, I'm playing on a plane like, damn, I hope it's not me. I hope it's not me. <laughs> 
shit came through, yo. Shit was me, yo. I'm not gonna lie, the bill was like 25,000. <laughs> 25,000. I'm not gonna lie. I don't even think I had enough of my credit card. My credit card wasn't even. <laughs> yo, yo, I, yo, I'm on the phone yeah. with American Express stressing, like, yo, can you, can you just up my limit, please? I'm gonna pay it back. I don't, I'm at a restaurant and I, I can't, I can't pay for it right now. My card, I'm on the phone with them for like three hours at the restaurant, just sitting there tight, yo. like, please just up my limit right now. Whatever you could do, I'm trying, I try to pay half my debit card, pay half my other debit card, pay half my American Express. Shit declining. I'm like, damn, bro, these niggas really got me like that. I'm sitting there like, yo, these motherfuckers fucked up, yo. After that shit happened, I'm and I'm mad about this shit. Whatever, we go by. They gave me like, they gave me like fifty thousand back. Like my vet said, fifty thousand here. It's for you for for take care of the bill. The bill was only twenty five, but if you gonna throw extra twenty, it's for you. So I'm like, all right, bet. Like I'm cool. I got, I got extra <laughs> twenty five. I'm good. But that that was the wildest shit that happened to me ever. Picture card in the hat. That shit was crazy. Hey, I'd have been mad as shit on the phone trying to up. That's crazy as hell. Cause you 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 know goddamn well that rookie contract ain't nothing like that motherfucker. Yo, yo, that shit. Hey, was, he making yo. twenty a year, yo, twenty five yeah, a year. Exactly. That yo, shit. That shit. That shit was crazy, bro. I, I was I was stressing, bro. I was stressing. Yo, that shit wild. Yo, let's uh I want to transition. I want to talk about uh the TBT, bro. I want to talk mm-hmm. a bit about the TBT this year, you know, because those three weeks, I don't think people really understand we won it, right? But those those three weeks was like really like a grind, right? Like yeah, I'll be, I'll be locked in. Yeah, yeah. Like we in. was we was really locked in, but it, it wasn't as easy as people really think. Like behind, like you know, we had a lot of shit going on as far as you know, people getting into it in the locker room. Just mm-hmm. competitive dudes, you know. We, all the dudes that we had on the team was like that. They was the man at one time on their team. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it's a lot of it's a lot of egos. Kind of. So break down for me those three weeks, bro, and, and then every single game and just kind of from from your perspective how that was. Um, break down for three weeks. So first week started off in Q's. First of all, I was happy to even be back in Q's at this time, but but just going through like the um the training process, like like the trying to like for that one goal, like everybody in there coming together trying to get better. No matter where you from, if you play for Q's or not, like motherfuckers in there, just we we all trying to get that 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 million. So just put your pride to the side, whatever we gonna argue, we gonna fight. You know, maybe we thugged it out, but but even like the practices were competitive. We in a lot of shit each other, motherfuckers about to fight. That's that was that was the competitive spirit. Even going game to game, it's like, damn, all right, you, you reach a certain amount of points now. Now we got to get to the next step. We got to win the actual game. because the, the Elam ending is different, motherfucker. That right. shit is tough. That's, that's, that's a tough. tough basketball game to be, play, yo. And, and that's that shit, man. I'm not going to lie. I, I, a lot of games we played, bro, that shit had me nervous, bro. Yeah. <laughs> that shit had me yeah. nervous, bro. I'm not going to lie, bro. One, one, one wrong turnover, two wrong turnovers, or, <laughs> or, or missed shot and a, and, a, and a transition three, that shit could fuck your whole shit up. Yeah. Now your mind feel like you about to lose. Like that shit. That shit is tough. But you know what I mean. This, this being there with everybody we had on the team was like we had good guys that was competitive and dug it out. Like we got that shit to work. We made it work. No matter how I came, we made it work. What, what what game, bro? Were you like super nervous though? That the one game in the tournament you was like, God damn, motherfucker, we we might lose this motherfucker. Shh, I'm not gonna lie. Before the championship game, the uh the Marquette game. That shit was, it was like a back and forth game. It the like, Marquette or know. Florida? I think it was, we played Marquette first, right? No, so we played Marquette first in the Elite Eight. Uh, uh, Elite uh, yeah, Eight, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah, so yeah. That, that, that game first, it was like, yo, that, like, you don't know who, it could go either way. Like, motherfucker, what's, yeah. what's the guard name? The White Bucks. He, he out there, he, he was, getting buckets left and right. Yeah, he, he couldn't even open. stop him. We like, damn, like. You don't know what, how this shit going to end. But we ended up beating them, thank God. And then even the Florida game was kind of like a back and forth game. We could have lost. We was, we was down one. And what's the name? Got the steal for the layup for the game one? Yeah, Greece. So, like, you know what I mean? It's shit like that. Like, one, one little shot or a foul, you in a free throw for them. They would have won the game. Like, that shit is that shit nerve wracking. Yo, bro. But for me, the last game, dog. So, the championship, championship game. game. My man, my man Dakari come off the out of bounds joint, butt ass wide open, wide, wide open. open for the game. This is the game and, right and, here, and, dog. And he and he a shooter, so I'm surprised. They need a best even, shooter. I'm surprised he even missed that wide open open shot. I was Yo, crazy, and, and, and so crazy after that, my ass falling out the out of bounds. Grab rebound, throw it back to you. 
Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that 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 whole that whole sequence right there, just that's that's not the play before that happened. I think I think Reese came down, tried to shoot a pull up three, got his shit blocked. Yeah. So now I'm getting back on defense, like, damn, bro, like this shit could be over. Like, damn, we had this shit right here. This shit could be over. That's that's what's running through my mind. I'm just like, yo, bro, we cannot foul. We gotta get this fucking rebound for the refs gonna let us play. They not gonna call no foul and they're gonna let us play. Boom, we got the rebound, I threw it back to you. You took like three dribbles, you passed somebody else, and then what's the name got the ball, bro? After that, bro, I'm like, yo, let's just try to get a let me set a, set, set a good screen and just roll. I'm in oh before I even set the screen, I'm in a corner wide open. Missed the three. Boom. I was, I was oh man, that shit. In and out joint. Yeah. It went in and out. I'm like, damn, all right, bet. Now we gotta get another stop. So now now this is when we got the final the, the uh second step after the car we missed the shot. And fucking he hit that shot, bro. That shit was like, yo, this we won a fucking championship, TBT, bro. That shit was tough, man. Like it, it was set for us to win, though, but that shit was tough. Shit was that tough. shit was tough. And, and bro, I know it ain't no like NBA championship or nothing like that, but I just felt like that through two weeks, like we was really like grinding, bro. Like, like locked in, like practicing, like, you know, making sure we talking about the shit every single day. And so like to win it when it went through. And then for me, I've been doing it for seven years. So I'm like, God damn, motherfucker. I need damn. something to go ahead. You know what I mean? It, so, yeah, that, so yeah, that shit was tough. Yeah, when he hit that fucking shot, I ain't gonna lie to you. It wasn't even, a, it, it, yeah, it's about the bread, but it was like, it was something about like then like a sigh of relief. You feel what I'm saying? We put in a lot, bro. Yeah, that that's that shit is a grind. Like that shit is well, people don't see that shit is really a grind. You gotta really go in there and, and like we we have four guys. We we no, first of all, none of us never played together like that before. I mean, we might have played pickup before or played against each other, but no one no one really played. So even come together in three weeks to, to do that, that's like that's tough. Yeah, guys that never even put this played their Syracuse before, never put a Syracuse jersey on. I was willing to come. On the team to like to try to win this shit, like that that that's tough, man. I commend motherfuckers for that, bro. I ain't never gonna forget that shit. Nah, that shit that shit kind of that shit like bonded motherfuckers to a whole yeah, hell level. yeah, what, bro? We, yeah, for sure, bro. Only three weeks, bro. I, I'm fucking cool as shit with everybody, man. That shit that shit was tough, man. I missed that shit. I ain't gonna. I'm playing next year. Yeah, that's playing a fact. Next year. That's I'm playing next year. And it's in the queues. Yeah, yeah, that's what made me hype. Oh tell damn! My so girl, you, I told my girl you, you, like, "Yo, you got you can come this time." <laughs> oh yeah, you just made the announcement. Then that's what motherfuckers been waiting on. Yeah, I'm playing for sure. <laughs> I'm playing. I know that's a fact. We got to get that shit back to back. Hey, bro, you been uh, you you been able to check out any of the uh, the hoop games this year for Q's? Uh, I, I watched a few. I didn't watch the um, who they play. I didn't watch like the last two games, but I, I watched a lot. I watched a lot of college basketball, anyways, as it is every day. So. So yeah, I'll get you out of here with this one. Which I mean, you know, we struggling a little bit. We 11 11. You know, we heard a lot of bullshit shit. You think you was getting DMs? These motherfuckers get, these motherfuckers getting all type of shit in their inbox. They, you know, this the they 11 11. So it's probably the, the worst season for Syracuse standards. Mm -hmm. I mean, ever for real. You know what I'm saying? So what's yeah. I mean, you know, from you seeing them play a little bit, what's your take, man? What what, what can they do better um, you know, going forward? Um, well, yeah, honestly, the, the team this year is, is like, it, it's different. Like, it's, it's not the typical Syracuse team. So it, it, I don't know, like, they they, they got to get tougher with it or play a little more fit. Like, this team is more finesse. It's not, they're not physical like that. You don't really got anybody in that paint that, that, that's, that's banging like that either, for real. So it, it's kind of tough. It's like a different Syracuse team. But this, you know what I mean? I don't, like. You can't do nothing but go out there and try to hoop the best you can. Like leave it on the floor, bro. I even tell Ben, I talk to Benny all the time, like, yo, bro, you gotta, you gotta figure out what are you good at, bro. Cause like whatever you think you did in high school, Bayham not gonna let you do that. Bayham didn't let me shoot no threes. He said, if I don't shoot threes in practice, don't shoot them in the game. So I had to find my little spots where I know I can hit shots at. So I, I, I try to talk to him as much as I can about that shit. And when he when he get in the game, like sometimes he be jogging, he run through the motions. Bro, yeah. switch your hat, bro. Yo, run down, get a rebound, and sprint the floor, bro. You might get an easy dunk, bro. Getting three easy transition dunks, bro, mean a lot, bro. Like rebounding, seven rebounds, getting two block shots, that should add up, bro. Like that should mean a lot. It might not sound like the most exciting stats, but bro, like you can do that shit, bro. So I'll be watching that shit, like, damn, bro. He don't even know. He don't even know, bro. And that's what I'm saying. A play like that, and you know, you have some a play where you get fast break. You might be down. You get on a fast. 
dunk on a motherfucker head, now the whole energy changed. Yeah, the like whole the game. whole vibe just changed up. Yeah, you yeah, know he, what I mean? So he, I, he could bring that. He could bring that. And I'll be trying to tell him that. I, I'm talking to his pops. I'll be trying to tell him that all the time, too. Like, uh, you could do that shit. You just got to find your spots on the floor. You got to know. You got to ask Red or work with Red and see, like, where you going to get your most shots. You might not get the most shots. He got two sons on the team that's getting the most shots. And he got a point guard that's good that's getting the most shots. But you could get two pit backs a game, get 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 two fast breaks a game, catch a pit back dunk. I mean, hit hit a mid range and you got twelve points right there. Get a free throw, you got 12, 13 points right there. You got to balance it out. You got to know where your spots at. So that's that's the most I be looking for when I watch the games. So I watch, I watch him the most. Yeah, that's a fact. That's a fact. They got they got an uphill battle, bro. Eleven and eleven. I think they got like nine games left to. You know, see if they can get into that tournament. We, I, I guess we'll see. But, uh, hey, bro, man, I, I appreciate you hopping on. I know you all the fucking way in Taiwan across the world. It's in the middle of the fucking night over there. You've been practicing all type of shit, man. So I appreciate you coming on and nah, you already know, sharing bro. some stories, bro. I ain't tripping. No, it's tomorrow to be there too. So I'm going up out here. <laughs> Ooh, I, I, you know what? February 5th, I, I did see that, yeah. man. Happy, happy, well, shit, it's your birthday over there. Oh, yeah, I, I don't count this shit, though, man. I'm 12 hours ahead, bro, 13 hours ahead. But no, I appreciate it, though, bro. No, nah, happy birthday, bro. Do your thing for the rest of the season out there, too. I, I'll see you in the summer. I already know.